Excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, ministers, ladies and gentlemen. Khuburats na khuburan, la Afrika khuburats. According to the Ethiopian calendar, September 11th, 2007 marked the beginning of the third millennium. The nearly eight-year difference as compared to the Gregorian calendar comes from the fact that the calendar begins not with Christ's birth, but with the moment of his incarnation, counting from the day of the Annunciation. I hope the new millennium will be an era of peace and prosperity to all of us and my best wishes for a peaceful and wonderful Ramadan too. Thank you. Ethiopia, as its inhabitants claim with pride, was for centuries an island of Christianity in a sea of non-believers. Today, however, the island is beginning to founder in a landscape increasingly dominated by Islam. In 1950, Muslim made up 25% of Ethiopia's population. By 1997, the proportion had risen to 35%, whilst today, according to various sources, the number stands at 40 or even exceeds 50%. Irrespective, everyone agrees that Islam is the country's fastest growing religion. Islam came to Ethiopia in the 7th century and then slowly uh, it expanded itself. Now, the last 10 years, politically, the Muslims have been involved. We have a good number of Muslim ministers, Muslim parliamentarians, Muslim ambassadors, also a good number of uh, regional state presidents. When you go from Jima to Addis, you will see how many new mosques along the roadside. And when you come from the other side, from Awasa to Addis, or when you come from the north to Addis, they all say the same thing. You see how many mosques. As recorded in the Acts of the Apostles and as recounted by historians, Christianity reached Ethiopia in the first century. Shortly after Christ's death, Deacon Philip found himself at the court of Ethiopia's Queen of Candace, where he met a courtier who became a Christian. On returning to Ethiopia, he recounted all to his sovereign, who also adopted the Christian faith, was baptized and introduced Christianity throughout her kingdom. And so David's prophecy was fulfilled. Ethiopia will rise and extend its hands to God. 300 years later, Christianity once again reached Ethiopia thanks to brothers, Odysseus and Frumentius, Phoenician Christians who traveled throughout the Red Sea area. Pirates seized their ship. They were sold to the royal court, where they served the future king as teachers, who gave them their liberty once they achieved adulthood. They built kind of chapels in order to support their Christian faith. They spoke about their faith. One of them returned to the Middle East, the other set to the Patriarchate of Alexandria, where he met the famous Saint Athanasius, to whom he recounted what was going on in Ethiopia. Saint Athanasius consecrated him a bishop and sent him back to Aksum in Ethiopia. He was ordained around 328, and that is how the church was born here. Ethiopia was the second Christian state to make Christianity a state religion after Armenia. So it is quite old in the fourth century, it became official. King Azana's conversion, Odysseus and Frumentius's former disciple, proved decisive in shaping Ethiopia's culture and history 
setting it apart from the breast of Africa. The king built many churches and spread the Christian faith throughout Abyssinia. The people called him Abba Salama, Father of Peace, title still given the head of the Abyssinian church. Christianity developed unhindered up until the 6th century when the Persians occupied the whole of the Middle East, depriving Ethiopia access to the Red Sea. The next century saw the Prophet Muhammad instruct his followers to seek safe refuge in northern Ethiopia, at that time known as Abyssinia, where they would find a king who does not wrong anyone. And so Muhammad's followers, including his son-in-law, finally reached Ethiopia in 615. The Prophet instructed his followers who had come there to respect and protect the country. Ethiopia, it has a very ancient culture which unite, unites elements from the ancient Middle East and Africa. It's a country where all the original Abrahamic religions, Judaism and Islam and Christianity, um, flourished and coexisted from a very early time and where they had a special nature which was different. For example, the traditional nature of Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity is much closer to Islam and Christianity in its practices and observance than Western Christianity. Ethiopian Christianity believes uh, accommodating, hosting a stranger is part of our tradition and part of our teach teaching. So that is how Muslims were also accepted in Ethiopia. And Muhammad, even at that time, he said to all Muslim nations, Ethiopia is the only country that opened her door to host us. So don't persecute Ethiopians. Relations between the Ethiopians and the Muslims have historically remained cordial, with mutual trade and mutual religious tolerance some of which grew out of real religious similarities. However, in subsequent centuries, the Muslim population has grown in number, becoming increasingly wealthy and influential. As early as the 10th century, Harar, a major commercial center located in eastern Ethiopia, became the fourth holiest city in the Islam world, with mosques springing up on every corner. For Ethiopia's Christians, this was a time of trying to maintain their national and religious identity. In the 12th century, King Lalibela began building Ethiopia's new capital city in a remote and mountainous area of the country, thereby assuring him and his subjects safety. Named after him, the complex of 12 churches hewn out of solid rock survives to this day, a masterpiece of church architecture, evidence of Christianity's latter-day strength. In subsequent centuries, despite numerous armed conflicts with Muslim neighbors, Christianity managed to retain its dominance in Ethiopia. Islam's rapid expansion did not come about before the 20th century. Ever richer from trade and services, Muslims became an ever more influential part of Ethiopian society, gaining a dominant position over their poorer Christian brethren. However, it was not until the most recent decades, with the spread of an aggressive strain of Islamic fundamentalism, that relations between the followers of two religions worsened to a point where armed conflicts became ever more prevalent. The Muslims have much more political influence. What has also happened is that um, there has been much more economic cooperation between the Arab countries and Ethiopia. And Ethiopia has many natural resources which the Arab countries don't have. And this also opens a path for cultural, cultural and religious influence. 
there has been more influence from international Islam and many of the uh, and a lot of madrasas and other foreign Islamic institutions have been opened here. Fundamentalist groups who came through Somalia to convert Ethiopia, they were found uh, red-handed with all their materials, the money in cash even, and even uh, weapons. So it's just to, to tell you, whoever comes here, they sensitize, they agitate the Muslims. They want them to, to react, to show, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We have the, the threat of the infiltration of Islamistic groups or fundamentalistic trends coming into the country. So that is what we are afraid of. I think we have to work hard on teaching uh, tolerance and respect and mutual, uh, let us say, collaboration. But we are afraid that the youth can be, especially the Muslim youth can be uh, influenced and there can be a change. The religious Muslim teachers are there to mobilize the Muslim community through teaching, discipline and training. These groups base themselves in Addis Ababa from where they send their young, Quran-educated students out to all parts of the country. They are instructed to visit all Muslims and call them to prayer and teaching. They teach how Muslims should live and act as true followers of Islam, which is how throughout the country they manage to attract many young Muslims to the faith. Huge amounts of money from Islamic countries greatly exceed those that we, the church, could bring in. These are two different worlds. We therefore have to take great care, because development can come from Islam. Islam is undoubtedly a much greater force than it used to be. Islam is a universal religion and uh, our Ethiopian Muslims have, uh, let us say, solidarity expressions coming from uh, the other Muslim countries and um, uh, there is globalization also in the Muslim world, if you want, in the Islamic world. So they receive many good things, but also they can receive bad things. So the jihadist movements, people who are related to the fundamentalist groups are pushing for a certain infiltration. Violence against Christians in Ethiopia has intensified in recent years. In October 2006, Muslim militants attacked a Christian church in Jima. Five people were brutally murdered. They started to pour kerosene on the car and on the church building and set it on fire. People started running and jumping from the burning church. They asked us again and again to say Allah Akbar, God is great, God is great. The priests refused to say Allah Akbar. Then they killed him with a sword. They cut him in two parts and then they started attacking young people and children. <laughs> 